Today, Beers TV investigates the obstruction of light. This is the very first time the community gets to see the results of our new shadow test on nearly 50 different light configurations. We've talked about the effects of shadows for years, but seeing is believing, and I think today's results are compelling. The test is simple. We mount the lights at the optimal mounting height we found for each configuration. We then use our shadow apparatus to create three types of shadows. The primary shadow is created by a large plate in the center of the tank, 16 inches off the bottom. The secondary shadows are created by the three quarter inch supporting legs, which create shadows nearly as dark as the plate, but much thinner. The tertiary shadows are created by legs and reflections off the glass. This performance test is designed to simulate the effects of both aquascape protrusions, as well as branching and plating corals with a clear visual reference that can be seen with the naked eye. Our goal, the data required to make more informed decisions on how we light our tanks. The results are going to look like this. The lighting options which produce the hardest shadows will have clear dark areas in the tank, some even hard enough that you can clearly read the TV through the opaque window of our primary obstruction. With the hardest shadows, the par under the primary obstruction is just a quarter of what it is unobstructed, and the secondary obstruction cuts the par roughly in half. So why does shadowing matter? Well, coral relies on light energy for metabolic function. If half the coral's tissue is being shadowed by an aquascape, a neighboring coral, or even its own growth, that coral is getting a fraction of the light and ultimately a fraction of the energy that it uses for growth and health. Conversely, lighting options or configurations which produce the softest shadows and wrap around objects will only lose a quarter of the light with even the biggest primary obstructions and near no loss with smaller secondary obstructions. The difference is stark and if the corals were selecting a light for themselves, they would almost certainly be selecting softer lighting configuration options that wrap them in energy. All of today's light results look like this, a hard light and soft light reference on the left, the test results on the right, Feel free to watch them all or use the quick links in the description or timeline scrubber to find the lights that you're most interested in. At the end of today's video, I'll share primary takeaways that I found from today's results, so feel free to jump to that as well. Starting with the current USA 24, the small form factor light produces fairly hard shadows. Switching to dual R24s evenly spaced to get better coverage from multiple intersecting lights, we see the primary shadow shrinks and the secondary shadows soften a bit. The ATI Sun Power, which is eight individual light sources housed inside a single fixture, has only the softest traces of shadows. The eight light sources configured in a grid, almost as large as a tank, wraps the objects in light, and even large obstructions directly into the light are not an issue. Next, the Kessel A360X, the ultra-small light source, creates a fairly large primary shadow with reasonably hard secondary edges, one of the options where the TV is visible. Switching to evenly spaced dual A360s, the primary shadow is half the size and the secondary shadows are much softer. Installing two modules over a two foot area had a significant softening effect. The Neptune Sky, a medium to large form factor diffused light, had soft shadows which are barely noticeable. The light is significantly larger than the primary obstruction and part of why there are so few shadows produced. The GHL7024 had four pucks of recessed LEDs and white reflectors and it produced moderately soft shadows. The noticeable flicker is something the camera picked up but not visible to our eyes in person. The GHL7026, one of the softest shadows that we saw with the form factor this size. Again, the flicker likely related to a refresh rate that the camera can pick up but not likely that the human eye would perceive. A single Reef Bright XHO 5050, even though it crosses directly over the longest path of the primary obstruction plate, very moderate shadows from the single strip light. Switching it up to three of the XHO strips, they're similarly soft shadows. And not surprisingly, with five of the XHO strips, the shadows become even softer. The AI Prime had one of the harder shadows of the test with the orange TV very clear. This is just the net result of a small form factor light source and narrower angled lenses. Switching to an AI Prime, but with front and back fill lights from the AI Blade grows, the shadows get significantly softer. Notably, all the shadows are evenly reduced without additional shadows being created. Switching to evenly spaced dual primes, they have a smaller, but still hard primary shadow in the center. The secondary shadows soften as compared to a single, but there are new tertiary shadows as well now. Switching to four AI primes and covering one square foot with each had arguably the best performance of all the prime configurations. There's a lot of tertiary shadows, but they're all much softer. This result visualizes why we have suggested four AI prime pucks spread out rather than one AI Hydra 64 with four centralized pucks for many years. The ATI Stratton, a large form factor LED light almost the size of the test tank itself, notably producing almost no shadows, and very similar performance to its sister, the ATI T5 SunPower. 
The Red Sea Reef LED 50 produced a large, moderately hard shadow similar to other small form factor lights. Switching to two evenly spaced Reef LED 50s 8 inches apart over 2 foot cube, the primary shadow shrank substantially and they all got a lot softer. A single AI blade grow that crosses the full length of the primary obstruction produced a very soft shadow. Going to evenly spaced dual AI blades, almost no shadow effects, very soft and wrapping around the obstructions. This is another example of dual AI blades, but one grow and one glow spaced three inches apart to blend the different spectrums evenly. Even with bow strips directly over the primary obstruction, the shadow is soft. Going to triple AI blades, the shadow is now non-existent and very similar to the best performance that we've seen yet. In fact, the improvement going to four AI blades is very subtle and what I'd refer to more of a mist than a shadow. Going to five AI blades evenly spaced over the tank, only the most discerning eye who knew what to look for would be able to visually detect the shadows this soft. The max spec jump produces harder primary and secondary shadows, likely a result of the somewhat small form factor and narrow angle lens or puck design. The Radeon XR15 Pro is an interesting result of a very soft primary shadow directly under the light and obstruction plate, moderate secondary and tertiary shadows, all of which are the result of a medium sized form factor light, ultra wide HI2 optics reflecting off the glass. The Radeon XR30, which is a larger form factor, does significantly soften the shadows. Switching the two XR15s evenly spaced over a two foot tank reduces the shadows over a single XR30 to a small degree, but the advantage of multiple smaller lights not as significant as it once was with previous generations. With the sixth generation and the new HEI2 optics, the ultra wide angle lens and reflections off the glass perform a lot like a larger form factor light and spacing multiple smaller lights is not as necessary for shadow performance. The Kessel A500X performing a lot like the smaller A360X. The small light source produces larger, moderate intensity shadows in this test. The Kessel AP9X is interestingly producing a harder set of shadows than dual A360Xs, likely the result of recessed lenses and oval shaped reflectors optimized to illuminate a rectangular area. The Radeon XR15 Pro coupled with the fill light from two AI blades produced the softest and hardest to see shadow results of any Radeon configuration in this performance test. In fact, front and back fill light softens the shadows with every modular light configuration we tested. Next, one of my go-to combinations, the Kessel A360X and Aquatic Life T5 hybrids. Result is the front and back T5 fill light softens out the harder shadows for a more even result than the A360 does on its own. The Aquatic Life Coral Cover and A360X 3-point hybrid produces nearly the same result with the LED strips producing the front and back fill light rather than T5s, but the shadow performance is nearly indistinguishable. The A360X paired with dual XHO Reef Bright LED strips for fill light softens the shadows, but not as much as many other 3-point hybrid options in this test. The Kessel A360X paired with the dual AI blades for front and back fill lighting produce fairly soft shadows. A legit option for those who like that T5 fill light and shadow reduction, but want it with LEDs. The Kessel A360X with quad reef bright XHO strips have harder shadows, not as soft as some of the other front and back fill light options, even with the bigger form factor. The AI Hydra 32 produces similar hard shadows to the AI Prime, not surprising because it uses a similar lens design, but two of those pucks packed close together. Switching to dual AI 32s over a two foot area significantly reduces the shadows, but I'd still describe them as harder than many others under the primary obstruction. Similar result with the AI Hydra 64 and four pucks, fairly hard shadows. For reference, this is four AI primes spread out evenly into four quadrants, and this is the same four pucks but inside the Hydra 64 form factor, just a different result. The Reef Breeder's Photon produced a very unique moderate primary shadow, but without hard edges and minimal secondary shadows produced from the grid of intersecting cones of light from the individual lenses. The 5 bar Orphic OR3 is on the soft shadow end of the spectrum, not surprising from a large grid of light suspended fairly high over the tank. The Orphic Atlantic Icon is similar large form factor light, but not quite as good of shadow performance as the 5 OR3 bar spread over a larger area. The Max Spec Razor performs fairly well on the secondary shadows, but the two intersecting pucks of light still create a fairly hard shadow under the primary obstruction. The Red Sea Reef LED 90 performs similar to all the other small form factor lights with significant primary and secondary shadows with moderate tertiary shadows. Switching to the Reef LED 90 with front and back fill light from the AI blade, all the shadows get much softer. 
Switching to a dual module reef led 90 configuration spaced evenly over a two foot tank, the shadows get harder than the front and back fill light approach. The Red Sea reef led 160, similar harder shadow results as the other single reef led modules. One of the surprises of the test, the Prism 2 producing very soft shadows, also likely a result of a larger strip light form factor, but wider and in a much lower par configuration. Not bad shadow performance from the Aquamax Prism CC2 as well, low par but moderate to soft shadows. The Radeon XR15 Blue not performing much differently than the Pro with minimal shadowing from the primary obstruction in the center and moderate soft shadowing from the secondary and tertiary obstructions. The larger XR30 Blue improved shadow performance in a higher par form factor. The ReefBright Dual XHO A360, which is the ReefBright kit with shorter front and back fill lights, moderate primary secondary shadows, and the TV is visible. Okay, so after all that, these are the primary takeaways, much of which are known to the lighting world, but seen is believing. Small light sources and focused light sources tend to produce the hardest shadows. Using multiple overlapping compact light sources can help, but not to the degree that many would anticipate, even when spaced eight inches apart. In fact, in some cases, multiple lights just create more but less aggressive shadows. Second, the three-point hybrid options that add front and back fill light to those compact primary lights help the primaries reduce the shadows, wrap around the objects, and perform better in this test. Third, medium-sized modules with ultra-wide lenses seem to be the solution for those that are prioritizing a low-profile, single-modular solution with reasonably good shadow performance. Fourth, no way around it, a light source that is physically larger than what it's trying to illuminate wraps it in light from a multitude of angles for the best shadow performance. That can be eight T5 bulb light sources combined into the ATI Sun Power, a large grid of smaller LEDs like the ATI Stratton, or a modular combination of LED strips like the AI Blades. These were amongst the best shadow performances today. Fifth, this is out of scope, but because we added a small amount of surface movement to the test, you can actually see some of the visual artifacts from the different approaches to LED technology and the engineering used to achieve these results. That ranges from an ultra flat look with no sense of movement to very active hard shimmer lines to various degrees of undesirable disco or TV static effects. Those who are shimmer fanatics will probably find one of the three point hybrid options to be their ideal pick. That leads us right in the next question. Some of these certainly perform better at shadow elimination than others, but do they cost more and is it going to be really expensive? The answer is no. In fact, some of the best performers out there are the lowest cost solutions for PAR. It's in the data that's next. Is the solution that you chose the most effective? The cost of light right here and the entire lighting showdown right here.